So, welcome to this module on quality attributes. This is a short module on what are quality attributes. So, if you have a set of requirements, they can be classified into three categories. One what we call uh, functional requirements, then the next category is quality attribute requirements and then the third one is constraints. So, functional requirements are the ones that uh, are very easy to understand what they mean. The system is supposed to do some computation and those are functional requirements. It is supposed to calculate the income tax given my income. So, that is a functional requirement. Quality attribute requirements are talk about how well the system does it. It is an adjective to the verb. For example, the income tax that is being calculated should be calculated in uh, 5 seconds at the most or 10,000 people should be able to simultaneously compute their taxes. So, this is a, an attribute on the function that is the income tax calculation. Constraints are the kind of requirements we face, we put on um, our functional and non quality attribute requirements. For example, this has to work with Internet Explorer, it has to use an Oracle database engine or should be developed using Java. So, these are the kind of constraints which have been specified in addition to what is to be done, how well it is to be done. Normally what we do is these two are also called non-functional requirements. So, we have functional requirements, what is the actual business logic that is to be computed, we have quality attribute requirements, how well that has to be done and we have constraints like under what operating conditions this has to be done, it has to be done under 10,000 dollars let us say that is a constraint. So, <coughs> uh, some definitions of non-functional requirements, uh, I will run through this. Requirements which are not specifically concerned with the functionality of a system, they place restrictions on the product being developed and the development process and they specify external constraints that the product must meet. Another uh, definition, it is not a uh, definition in the definitional sense, uh, global requirements on the development or operational cost, performance, reliability, maintainability, portability, robustness and the like. So, essentially they are talking about uh, the trying to enumerate what are the attributes that you might encounter when you talk about non-functional requirements like portability is, is an attribute that you will encounter when you are talking about a function. It should be able to, one should be able to port it easily from one platform to another that is portability. In addition to being able to compute income tax, I should be able to run it for example, not just on uh, uh, Windows hardware, but also probably on uh, a Linux server. Okay. That is a simple example of uh, some software being portable. So, I have another definition of what is uh, an NFR, especially in the context of uh, architectures. So, we have seen earlier uh, one thing that distinguishes one architecture from the other is the quality attribute. The uh, a simple example uh, that we have seen, if you execute the business logic on the client side, client side on the desktop versus on the server side, I will probably get greater throughput. I may compromise some other quality attribute like portability, but it will execute better, faster. right? So, in, instead of using one server, if I use three servers, then I will probably get faster response times and maybe uh, greater capacity. So, in the context of uh, uh, software architecture, a non-functional requirement is can be understood in this fashion. 
So let us say you have two different architectures for the same problem. How do they differ from each other? They will differ from each other in some properties. For example, one may be more portable than the other. Okay. So features which do not change between these two solutions is the functional requirement and features which change between these two which are different between these two architectures are the non-functional requirements. Okay. So if you look at our textbook uh, we are following uh, Bass, Clements and Kesman, uh, they define quality attributes as the major ones as availability, interoperability, modifiability, performance, security and testability and usability and they also say that there are other quality attributes which are uh, minor, not minor in the minor sense but in the secondary sense like variability, portability, elasticity, mobility and so on. We will visit these again uh, in subsequent modules, but today I also want to bring to your notice a reference which is a standard called ISO 25010. It is a standard about uh, software or software product. It came out in 2011, the first edition. So it talks about two kinds of quality, quality in use and product quality. So quality in use relates to the outcome of interaction when a product is used in a particular context. It has five characteristics, we will see them in a minute. It is about the degree to which a product or a system can be used by specific users to meet needs to achieve specific goals with effectiveness, efficiency, freedom from risk and satisfaction in specific contexts of use. The product quality model relates to static properties of software and dynamic properties of the computer system in which the software is ex executing. It has eight characteristics. We will see them now. But let me quickly note that the standard does not talk about uh, functional requirements or compliance requirements, it does not talk about how to document or support or do training, it does not talk about costing or uh, project timing. So this is the in use quality, it is uh, as I said five characteristics, uh, effectiveness, efficiency, freedom from risk, context coverage and satisfaction. Freedom from risk is again covered into three sub characteristics, economic risk mitigation, health and safety risk mitigation, environmental risk mitigation. So when you are executing a particular piece of software in use, you have to make sure that you do not suffer losses to either your health, wealth or to the environment. So it talks about this as a quality attribute, how well your software can deal with the situations. So context coverage is about completeness, how completely can you solve your problem and how flexible is it that you can solve the problem. Satisfaction is about usefulness, trust, pleasure and comfort. The product quality parameter has is characterized by eight sub characteristics, usability, performance efficiency, security, maintainability, reliability, portability, compatibility and functional suitability. Now as you can see each one of them is divided further. The definitions of each one of these are available in the slides you can download, but I will just highlight a few of them in this module. You can look at our uh, separate module on ISO 25010, there is another one which talks only of this standard and where each one of this is discussed and described. So if you are looking at performance efficiency for example, time behavior. Time behavior is when you want to perform a function, how fast or slow does the 
function respond. Okay, response time as we would probably use call it. Resource utilization. Resource utilization is about when the function is executing on your server on your software, how busy does the computer system get? Is it consuming all its resources or is it using the resources efficiently? Capacity is the ability to scale. How many simultaneous tasks that I can do? If more users come onto the system, does it have enough capacity to accommodate them? Okay, that is an example of uh, performance efficiency. So, as I said, please look into our other module on ISO 25010 for more details. I will leave you with a homework. What you should do is whenever you sit in front of a computer system or a piece of software, you try to classify your experience into functional and non-functional. Think for a second, what is the fun, what is the job I have I am doing on the system. For example, I may be searching for a document over the internet. I type in some keywords and something is returned. A set of results come back. So, that is the function I am trying to do. Now, what is the non-functional requirement? How fast does it take for the system to give me back the result? Is it showing the results properly? Am I getting confused in identifying the various set of results that come? Am I paying a lot of money to get this? Is it costing me a lot of money? At the end of the day, am I happy using this system or not? If I have two pieces of software which do the same kind of function for me, how are they different from each other? So, you must develop a perspective which allows you to compare two experiences that you have in operating a computer system from a functional perspective and a non-functional perspective. Thank you and see you soon.